All right, we're going to work with the zeros of a polynomial function. If a function is a polynomial function, then the values of x for which the function is equal to zero are called the zeros of the function. These values of x are called the roots or the solutions of the polynomial function um, when we equal it to zero. Each real root of the function appears as an x-intercept on the polynomial function. So I'm going to mark this up a little bit. When we set the function equal to zero and we solve it for x, these are going to be the x-intercepts of the polynomial function. They're also called the zeros of the function, roots or solutions. So we're going to go ahead and work with our example here. We're going to set the function equal to zero, and then we're going to solve it for x. So we're going to try and factor this. So we're going to group it because it's four terms. We're going to take out the greatest common factor of the first group, which is x squared. We're going to take out the GCF of the second group, which is negative 1. Both of those parentheses are the same. That is your new GCF. And then your leftovers go in the second parentheses, x squared minus 1. Now we're going to factor the second parentheses using the difference of two squareds. Now I have a completely factorized. We use the zero product property, setting each factor equal to zero. Then we solve them separately for x by undoing. So we would subtract three, we would add one, we would subtract one. These are the three zeros of the function. They will also be your x-intercepts when we graph them. Looking on the next slide, what this does is it shows you with the graphing calculator, if you were to type that function into the graphing calculator, here would be the shape of the graph. This is our cubic function, it's the shape of a snake. Here are the three x-intercepts, positive one, negative one, and negative three. Here's the x-intercept, the x-intercept, and the x-intercept zoomed in. When the zero, that would be the ordered pair, negative three, zero, negative one, zero, and one zero. You can also display on the graphing calculator a table of values. So you can look in your table, here's your x and your y, and you can find those ordered pairs. Here's another example of finding all the zeros of the function. So we set the function equal to zero and we factor it. We're going to take out the GCF first. So I'm going to take out a negative x squared. I'm left with x squared minus 4x plus four. Then I look inside of this parentheses, this is a trinomial leading coefficient of one. So we say, what are the factors of four that add to negative four? Well, that would be negative two times negative two. And now we're gonna go ahead and use our zero product property. 
So our first factor is negative x squared. Our second factor is x minus 2. Third factor is x minus 2. We would divide this by negative 1. We're still going to get 0. Then we would square root it, and we get x equals 0. This is called a repeated 0 because it has that x squared. Now you're not going to see two x-intercepts at 0. Add 2 to both sides, add 2 to both sides. So this is another repeated 0. So what does that look graphically? This graph degree shape is giving us the shape of an M. It's rising, there's your x-intercept, it's falling, it's rising, there's another x-intercept, and then it's falling. So that degree of 4 is giving you a shape of an M. N behavior is falling on the left and falling on the right. So the zeros are at x equals 0 and 2, and both are repeated. We call that a multiplicity of 2, because there is two of them here and two of them there. And that's the next thing, talking about multiplicity. If you have an even multiplicity, so like we had on these two, they were both a multiplicity of two, what happens is the graph at that zero is going to touch the x-axis and turn around. The other situation is when you have an odd multiplicity. Then what happens is at that zero, it's going to cross through the x-axis. So when it's even, it's going to touch the x-axis and bounce off or turn around. If it's an odd multiplicity, it's going to cross through. So here's an example. It says find the zeros of the function, give the multiplicity of each zero, and state whether the graph crosses the x-axis or touches the x-axis and turns back around. So we're going to set this function equal to zero. It's already in factored form, so we're ready to use our zero product property. We're going to undo. So we get an, a zero at x equals negative one. This multiplicity, there's just one of them. That's an odd multiplicity. So what happens when it's an odd multiplicity? It just crosses the x-axis. Okay, let's go to the second equation. We're going to undo it. So we're going to square root both sides. plus or minus the square root of zero is still zero. Then we're going to add three to both sides. And then divide by two. Now notice this is a squared, so we actually have two of them. So this is a multiplicity two, which is even. So that's telling us it's going to 
bounce off. So here's what the graph looks like using a graphing calculator. The shape is a snake. It rises. It falls. It rises. So here's your first x-intercept at negative 1. That's crossing. Then your second x-intercept of 3 halves, it bounces and then turns back around. 